okay, whatever. Let's start. Uh, yeah, the talk, as I told before, like is relatively introductory. So uh, some advantages of Google Go overall for command line tools. Uh, so the first thing is that the Go itself is actually uh, easy for development and readability. So many people actually claim that uh, the specification of the language itself is actually really easy to read. And uh, uh, like it actually has uh, relatively little like constructing, they try to like remove as much stuff as possible from the language itself. So uh, yeah, like you you can read pretty much uh, any Go, uh, Google Go language like uh, code and actually understand what's going on. The other thing, uh, as many people mentioned, is the concurrency is actually uh, the way it's handled. So it's like relatively small example that basically shows how you can launch a couple of Go routines and then uh, just like uh, reading the channel is basically a blocking operation and this thing will actually wait until both of them actually execute. Uh, interfaces, uh, uh, yeah, there's something I like about Go is that uh, you don't really have to explicitly say what structs actually implement your interfaces. They will automatically uh, implement them in case uh, they actually have all these methods. And uh, the static tapping actually helps you in development this way. Yeah, you just figure out what problems do you have uh, in the first place. Uh, then also a big advantage is uh, the great standard library. It actually has quite a bit uh, package inside, so you can actually create easily your, uh, let's say, web service. Uh, you can actually, like, the Go templates, they have both, uh, uh, you can use a template HTML package and use a template text. So a template HTML will actually automatically escape uh, your input as, a, yeah, as HTML. On the other hand, uh, the text, you will actually have to manually escape it if you want to. Uh, you can use it not only to actually generate some HTML pages, but also some config files as well. And uh, uh, regarding the cryptography, uh, yeah, there are multiple algorithms built in in the standard library. But on the other hand, they also have this uh, package that is written by the same developers that actually developed Google Go that includes some additional ones, including um, uh, Bcrypt, I think, uh, the one that is normally used uh, for like caching passwords. Uh, then performance is also uh, really good, and not only performance of the language is, uh, itself, that is quite comparable to C and C++. Uh, normally it's actually a bit slower, but that's not like 40 times, uh, like let's say Ruby, but it's actually, let's say, 30%, 100%, so it's like, it can be a couple times slower, but uh, when you start profiling, it actually might get quite a bit better. Uh, here, as an example, I actually wanted to show a couple of things. So this, uh, dlgoogle.com, that's the service that actually is used to uh, download content uh, from Google. Let's say when you're actually downloading Google Chrome, uh, that's exactly like the service that you use. And originally it was written in C++. Uh, they had problems with it because uh, uh, like the service itself was actually multi-threaded C++ code and uh, uh, it grew to that point where it was really like hard to track what's going on inside. And sometimes when you started downloading it, uh, it was just hang for let's say five or ten seconds, and nothing would happen. And so uh, at some point they just decided to rewrite it and rewrite it in Go because it actually handles concurrency really good. So uh, after they've done it, uh, it turned out that it was actually working faster than the, C the original C++ code. Uh, well, and the readability of the code itself was actually much better as well. Uh, the other project uh, is uh, YouTube Vitus. That's, uh, yeah, Vitus, basically. Uh, that's actually a project that they have been developing since 2010. And uh, in production on YouTube is actually since 2011. Uh, so what it does is, uh, uh, all the, like, as I understand, most of the data that they actually, like, uh, show to you on YouTube, it's actually stored not in their uh, big table, but it's stored in the MySQL. And so uh, it actually, you basically speak with uh, this Vitas uh, service, and then uh, Vitas service itself already uh, actually puts the data and like speaks with all the uh, MySQL instances. So it can automatically modif like uh, simplify your SQL queries. It can actually automatically shard for you, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it is basically made to be able to handle these like scalability issues of MySQL. Uh, relatively st straightforward. On the other hand, it has like some downsides. It, so, for example, it has transactions, but these transactions are uh, within the table only. Uh, but uh, 
since it was like in production for them like since 2011 and uh, Google is totally crazy about performance and if it has been showing itself pretty well uh, that probably means that uh, yeah it's pretty performant. Uh, the other advantage that we also have been talking about here already is just a single binary that you normally get so this way if you like have this command line tool uh, and it's, it's really easy to share with others and uh, you don't really have to have any dependencies or like let's say Python or Ruby installed, well, uh, and like maybe some additional gems, because uh, let's say on Linux you don't really have uh, Ruby by default, and uh, Python, there is Python, but in fact uh, you might be also dependent on the version of Python. Uh, okay, so uh, so mostly I'll further speak about the arguments parsing. Uh, so in uh, the standard library, uh, there is a way to actually get all the arguments that were passed to your command line tool. Uh, and I'll speak most about it because that's probably the common part for all the command line tools. You actually need to somehow get the arguments. Uh, so if you want, you can really, like, it actually gives you a slice of string. And so, uh, well, here, if we run it, we'll not really get much. Uh, so uh, that's, yeah. Uh, uh, basically, this is like uh, the Go binary that was created uh, in this presentation tool written uh, by. Uh, by yeah, go, de go developers and uh, uh, the next slide basically shows uh, they have a standard flag package and this flag package you can actually uh, read uh, multiple different arguments and uh, then the argument value will actually end up uh, in the variables that you specified uh, so uh, the first argument is actually uh, like the name uh, of your flag and then the second one is the default value and uh, and it's actually required. And this, uh, the last one is basically the uh, the message that actually uh, the string that describes uh, what it is. So this way, if you actually create multiple flags, it can automatically generate uh, usage message like for you. So uh, describing like all the flags and what they are. Uh, after you have done that, it's actually this uh, value will not really be a string. It's actually a pointer to the string. So this way, uh, after you have specified all, all your flags, you can actually parse those and then show the values or like use the values in a uh, the way you want. So this just references this point. Uh, here uh, it's exactly the same code, but normally, as I understand, uh, some people actually prefer to put this in the init func. Init actually is executed uh, in the very beginning of the uh, like start of the program before the main is called. So this way you can yeah just parse flags and then use those. Um, uh, there are multiple flag types uh, that you can actually use. Uh, yeah, I don't think that we need to mention a lot here. And uh, uh, yeah, there is also a way to actually not use a, a pointer to a string, but just use a string. So this is the way you can specify that. Uh, yeah, I don't think. I can describe a lot. Here. Uh, so, if you want to actually print uh, print your like defaults, uh, print basically usage message that actually would state which what each flag stands for, uh, based on the uh, yeah the these lines, uh, the usage. And then uh, you can just do like flag dot print defaults, and it will actually do that. Um, there is also a flag set, and uh, a flag set is uh, actually creates a kind of separate parser uh, that you can use in order to uh, parse your flags. So this way, uh, one of the things you can do is you can, let's say, uh, create a different flag sets for uh, different, uh, uh, let's say if your first attribute is actually, let's say, init or deploy, then you actually use one flag set because if it has, uh, can possibly have one set of flags, and uh, if it's actually different, then you, like it possibly can have different set of flags. So this is the way you can use it. And in fact, uh, when I was like showing you flags before, it actually uses also flag set, but it just creates a default one and uses that. Uh, in this kind of setup, it's fine. It's totally fine if you actually want to just uh, use uh, these arguments as uh, just just set of arguments, that's fine. But if you want uh, to write a tool that is uh, like Git, then it actually gets more challenging because this way you normally would have to uh, 
do part of the work by hand and maybe create multiple flag sets and at this point uh, code would not be pretty. Uh, I actually needed to create something like this and I remember the way uh, the HTTP handlers are implemented in Go. So this way you just specify a URL and uh, afterwards you actually give it a handler. So this way if it matches uh, this exact URL it just goes to this handler. Uh, so I implemented uh, a small tool and uh, this small tool actually allows you to basically select uh, a handler uh, and handle the command based on the input. So uh, in this small example it actually uh, you first just initialize it uh, and then afterwards it actually just whether uh, goes to this uh, init project uh, function or deploy project function. As you see here there is an options parameter and uh, there is a reason for that. So here for example you can specify uh, some parameter let's say project name and if you do that then in this case in this options uh, it will actually uh, give you a project name uh, like the project name key will actually have this uh, string that you have specified here but in fact it will actually require you to do that so this way um, yes yeah, so this way if you actually want to both have uh, an ability to go to this init project if user has specified project name or not then you can just uh, copy this Just have both uh, referencing the same function, and it will totally work. Uh, the next thing is that uh, you might actually want to also have uh, some additional arguments supplied to these commands. And uh, on the next slide, I'll show you how to do this. So you can actually have uh, some specific options. Uh, and uh, well actually, it's, I, I, I actually change it in one place, but it seems like I forgot to do this here on this particular map. Oh, I cannot edit it. So here it's option, and here it's uh, gofh dot option over here. Uh, but uh, in general, you are able to actually specify uh, some arguments that can be uh, given uh, to your command line tool, and then uh, here you actually did uh, uh, sorry handle command, and here you actually do handle command with options. And this way, uh, yeah, you supply these options, and uh, the same way the same handler. So this way, if it's boolean, then it will just uh, so as you see here, uh, this map here actually gets uh, just string values uh, at a val as a value, not an interface. So this way, if uh, it's a boolean flag, then it will just return you true. Uh, so this way, you can uh, easily create some Git-like uh, command line uh, tools, uh, and uh, yeah, like the actions can actually be handled by total different functions. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions.